Here outside the town of Boyle in the west of Ireland, there is a memorial to the Gaelic chieftain Red Hugh O'Donnell. It was put here in 1999 to mark the 400th anniversary of the Battle of Curlew Pass when Red Hugh and his army defeated forces of the English Crown during the Nine Years' War. The war began in 1593 between an Irish confederation led by two of the most powerful families in Ulster, the O'Neills and the O'Donnells, against the English who had sought domination over the entire island of Ireland. Red Hugh's status as one of the most tragic figures in Irish history is apparent from this memorial. He hoped he would be at the vanguard of those preserving Gaelic Ireland, but ultimately he would fail. The decisive battle took place in Kinsale in late 1601 and early 1602 after a Spanish contingent of 3,000 troops arrived in the town. That battle was also part of the Anglo-Spanish War between Protestant England and Catholic Spain. The Battle of Kinsale was a major defeat for the Irish and their Spanish allies and Red Hugh fled to Spain. He left Cork in late 1601, landing in the port of La Coruña a few weeks later. He wanted to go to Valladolid, then the capital of Spain, to petition the Spanish King Philip III to send another Spanish army to defeat the English. But he never got that far. Instead, Red Hugh arrived in the town of Simancas and this castle, which is 10 kilometres outside Valladolid, to wait for an audience with Philip III. He would die before he got to meet the Spanish king. This castle is the oldest archive of the Spanish state and contains 50 million documents from countries that were once part of the Spanish Empire. It also contains Red Hugh's last will and testament. In the name of God, Amen. Let these who shall see this last will and testament know that I, Lord O'Donnell of Ireland, being in bed, infirm in body of that illness which the Lord God has visited upon me, make and ordain this my testament to the praise and honour of God our Lord. And this is the place where uh, Red Hugh O'Donnell died. And this plaque here, which is in Irish and Spanish, says that on the 10th day of September uh, 1602, while waiting for an audience with Philip III, uh, Red Hugh O'Donnell died here. He was only 29 years of age, and to this day, uh, we don't know why he died. It's most likely that he died of natural causes, perhaps from a ringworm infection. Uh, the alternative viewpoint is that he was poisoned by a traitor by the name of James Blake. Well, welcome to Valladolid, Spain. We are in the place where the convent of St. Francis was in the past 400 years ago. And here was the, the chapel. We are just in the, in the place where the excavations to try to, to, try to find the, the body of Red Hugh O'Donnell. He was buried here in the Chapel of the Wonders in the big monastery of St. Francis and in the 2020 we had an excavation trying to find his body but at the moment has been impossible so we will try to continue if, if we have a new possibility we the city hall of Valladolid will try that and the 2020 was a very special moment because here in this the whole the excavation that was made here we found the walls as the investigator said where could it be the Chapel of the Wonders? And they found in the second day of the excavation appeared the wall of the chapel. And after that appears 20 skeletons that one could be the hero, the Irish hero, Red Hugh O'Donnell. So for us, 
we were really, really happy and really proud to have found the place of where he was uh, buried, as Christopher Columbus did too. And after that, the, after a few days of the, of the excavation, when we were just here two meters under the ground, uh, we started to get phone calls from all around the world as we were talking. We were getting phone calls from New York, from Philippines, from Australia, from France, all around the world. It was a piece of news that was in the New York Times, in the Guardian, in the BBC, everywhere. So after that we realized that what we were doing was something very important, something special for Irish people. So here we are in the Royal Palace of Valladolid. Philip III, the King of Spain, decided that uh, Red He O'Donnell, the Irish leader, should be here for the people of Valladolid and the whole Spain should pay res the last respects to him. At that time, Valladolid was the capital of Spain. According to the annals of the Four Masters, it was a funeral fit for a king. The body was conveyed to the king's palace at Valladolid in a four-wheel hearse surrounded by countless numbers of the king's state officers, council and guards with luminous torches and bright flambeau of beautiful wax lighting burning on each side of him. In, in recent years Valladolid has re-established its connections with Red Hugh O'Donnell by having a mock funeral in his honour every September. These are some of the same streets that the funeral cortege would have passed through on the way to Red Hugh's last resting place. In true Spanish style, the locals in Valladolid have gone all out to make this a memorable occasion with many Spanish and Irish visitors making the journey to the city. This is now an annual event.